In contrast to common markdown parses or viewers, Lia script allows you to include and execute JavaScript code. When combined with HTML elements, you are free to integrate whatever functionality you desire. The last statement of your script also defines the result that will be shown, but only if it is not undefined. You can also use console.log to log the script activities. As the examples below show, you can combine your scripts with Lia script animations, so they will only be executed in the right fragment, context. However, you can do much more with scripts. When discussing events, whether past, present, or future, your course may quickly become outdated. This is where scripts, as an initial building block, can shine. Using basic datetime calculations ensures precise determination of when events have occurred or will occur. Rather than relying solely on your calculations, users have the opportunity to inspect and validate your code by double-clicking on the highlighted script result. Even more, it is possible to modify the code, enabling them to double-check your findings and experiment with the results. We combine scripts with the Internationalization API, which enables appropriate formatting of outputs. The day's output is not hard-coded in our code. If we change the locale to another language, such as in the following example, the result will be optimized for the Russian language. Furthermore, by using the embedded Google Translator functions, the locale will be automatically set according to the selected language. Now, imagine that instead of performing simple calculations, a script could access any kind of real-world data and output it as either HTML or LIA script. What's more, picture scripts being directly combined with input fields, and a change in one script triggering the execution of another. All of this is possible in LIA script. We have reimagined the usage of scripts as interactive powerhouses, and we will delve into the details in chapter JavaScript or JS components. As of the time of writing, I strongly believe that the script tag, introduced by Netscape in 1995, cf. Wikipedia, is often misused. It remains somewhat outside of HTML, but if it could be embedded as part of the DOM, we wouldn't have to search the DOM for IDs and attempt to manipulate the content of a specific node. Much of the work we currently put into the development of web components could be achieved more easily by using the script tag in a slightly different manner. In Lia script, we now have the capability to insert scripts anywhere and connect them using a simple publish-subscribe mechanism. This allows us to create even more interactive books and courses. You can add additional calculations throughout your document, and the internal LIA script event system handles their execution. This can be viewed as an inverse approach to Jupyter or R notebooks, where content is structured around code for documentation purposes. Instead, we aim to integrate code as a native element within the content itself. To clarify some internals and how LIA script handles the execution of scripts, let's describe the execution order. After parsing the script tag, LIA script does not execute it directly. Instead, it is stored internally along with any possible output and connections to other scripts within an execution graph. Since LIA script is implemented in Elm and Elm cannot directly execute JavaScript code, LIA script uses a specific port to communicate with the outside world. When a script is ready, its code is sent as a string to the outside JavaScript world. LIA script controls when and which code gets executed. The code is then evaluated. The result is sent back as a string to LIA script. This string can be a certain value, HTML code, or even in LIA script notation, which is then parsed internally again and displayed. In its essence, a script is an inline element of LIA script, similar to bold, italic text, or inline formulas. It performs simple calculations and prints its result exactly where the script is defined.
that is the basic idea, nothing more and nothing less. The final, result, or expression of a script defines its output. Thus, the script with the alert gets executed, but it does not appear within the document, since alert evaluates to undefined. In this case, the script is expected to be hidden, without any visualization within the document. Such hidden scripts can be useful to trigger only an execution or to perform a certain action for manipulating the DOM or simply some maintenance work. Every script is executed in its own local scope, which means that the variable are defined in the hello mom example cannot be accessed in another script. Thus, if an error occurs, the error message is shown as a result of the evaluation. If you wish to exchange information between scripts using variables, you must define them globally. If you were to reverse the order of the two scripts, Dividing a by two would still result in the same error message, as scripts are executed sequentially and are must be defined first. Only after revisiting this slide, when both scripts are executed again, will the result of both scripts be correct. However, Lia script sends all scripts to JavaScript in order, and while some scripts may execute faster than others, this can lead to race conditions. Therefore, there is a better approach to updating scripts, as described in section connecting scripts with output. You can combine scripts with Lia script animations to trigger their execution. In textbook mode, all scripts will be executed after the slide has been loaded. In other modes, if a script does not belong to an animation, it will be executed immediately when you open the slide or whenever you visit the slide. A script gets executed, but you need to make an asynchronous call to an external API. How could you handle this? Well, in this case, Lia script provides a send object for every execution, which can be used to directly communicate with the script state in the Elm world. By using send.lia, you can directly send strings back from every asynchronous execution path. Every script maintains an internal state. Lia script is aware of which scripts have already been executed and which are still in the process of a long calculation. If a script returns a result or if send.lia is called, then the internal execution state is marked as inactive, which will trigger a new execution when the slide is revisited. Hence, a long-running script will not be restarted until it is finished. Thus, the previous example was not fully correct. If you would like to create, for example, a clock or a running counter, every revisit would create a new script that might run forever, and all of these would communicate with the Elm part, resulting in glitches. However, like in the case of executable code blocks, there are different options that can be used to communicate with the internal representation. By returning, LIA, wait, the Lia script script state is informed that although the execution has finished, the process is still running. Since send.lia would mark an internal stop, you can use send output to change the output asynchronously. That's it. This script will run indefinitely, and it will not trigger a new evaluation because Lia script keeps its internal state marked as active. However, you can trigger a stop after a long run by either calling send.lia again, which will also alter the result of the script representation, or you can send it a stop command, which is equivalent to sending LIA stop. This stop command does not affect the last representation but only the state. This script will be started again when the user revisits the slide.
In summary, you have three possibilities to send updates from your script, send.lia and send output, while the second is used asynchronously and won't stop the active state. The three additional helper functions are simple shortcuts to inform Lear's script about state changes. But it is not only possible to send back strings. Well, technically it is still the case, but the strings might be represented differently. Lear script allows the display of HTML and Lear script code as well, which is then reparsed and thus allows for the recreation of nested structures as well. This first approach does obviously not work. Lear script does not pass and interpret the return value on demand. Instead, everything is interpreted and displayed as a string. Instead, we have to start the return string with HTML, followed by whatever HTML code there is. Yes, we can style a script tag in our case, since it is commonly displayed only as an inline parameter. Thus, we can change its appearance to let the marquee tag use the full line width, and by using modify, we can prevent the user from inspecting the code, which also gets rid of the background. Of course, the following example could be optimized, but it is used to showcase the fact that it is also possible to mark strings as HTML by using send.lia or send output for asynchronous tasks as well. In this case, not only the time is updated, but also the color is set to a random value. Similar to HTML, it is also possible to return Lear script content as a simple string, which is then passed and its result gets displayed. In this example, for the formula, the backslash has to be escaped instead of escaping the f, which does not make sense. The run once option can be set to prevent the script from recalculating and thus reparsing the result again and again. When this option is set, the execution is done only once, and the result is statically stored within Lear script. On the other hand, this can also contain more complex elements, such as tables, which can be modified and inspected interactively. This way, you could also generate new quizzes randomly, add executable code snippets, and even generate scripts dynamically. However, in the case of dynamically created Lear script content, the state of quizzes, code, etc. is not stored permanently within the browser's index DB. This is only possible for elements that are defined explicitly within the markdown document. Just think about the possibilities. We can not only create courses using AI, as described in the article, but we could also dynamically generate new quizzes, programming tasks, or discuss topics directly in Lear script. What is missing too is to interconnect scripts and utilize different input methods to generate different interactive scenarios, as it was done in the initial weather API example. Here we had also applied the simple send object, but the two scripts at the head are connected with an input range and publish their results on a topic defined within the output parameter. On every change, the evaluation of the third script is triggered, and the two at input markers are replaced accordingly.
Thus, in the next section, we will introduce the combination of scripts and different input types, and afterwards, the pub-sub mechanism used to trigger a re-evaluation. Using only static scripts can be boring. We want to interact with the scripts and pass input values. In Lia script, this is achieved through a combination of script tags with input tags. Simply add the parameter input with additional type information to the script tag. Scripts that are combined with an input are marked by a thin frame. You can click on them and change the input. Different inputs produce different outputs and might trigger the execution slightly differently. Text inputs are evaluated immediately on every change. As you can see, after changing the input, such scripts store two states, the input value and the output of the calculation. Both values might be completely different. All possible types defined by the HTML5 standard can be used, along with their specific parameters. These are automatically passed to the generated input. This is also the default input. It demonstrates the usage of the at input macro, which defines the location where the current input value should be placed. Since the input could be interpreted as a string in, or used as part of your code, you have to decide how to treat it. The attribute value is used as the default initial input for your script during the first execution. If no value is defined, then the default input is an empty string. The code depicted below will implement a simple clickable button. As for all other script input combinations, except submit, the script execution will also be triggered when the script is loaded, to generate an output and afterwards on every click. Similar to a button input, as described in section button, but with one intentional difference. The script of a submit input will not be executed when it initially appears, Instead, it will only be executed if the user clicks on the button. Like button, submit does not have an internal value, only an output, and can be used to activate other scripts. Therefore, a default value must be defined initially, which also serves as the default output. This default value is used during parsing. For example, if a table is parsed with some scripts within the cells, then this value is used as a hint to identify the appropriate visualization. The number input is similar to text, but only numbers are allowed as input, and you can set additional parameters such as min, max, and step. The range input is actually a slider that generates numbers as input, and you can set additional parameters such as min, max, and step. The search input is actually a text input, but unlike regular text inputs, the script associated with it is only executed after the input field loses focus. The password input is also a text input, but unlike regular text inputs, the input characters are not directly visible. Similar to the search input, the script associated with it is only executed after the input field loses focus.
In contrast to the common usage of radio buttons, which requires the definition of multiple radio inputs, Lear script achieves the same with the radio input type and the definition of the options parameter. All possible options are separated by. Thus, the user can only select one of the defined options. Select is not actually an input type, but we added it since it allows performing the same task as radio buttons, but with a representation as a drop-down list. The usage of options and their separation by, is similar to radio buttons. Checkboxes, unlike radio buttons or select, allow you to select multiple elements at once or none. If no options are defined, a checkbox is treated as a single input that switches between true and false, depending on whether the checkbox is checked or not. If you define options, the current value as well as the result are treated as a list of strings in JSON format. This might not be sufficient or readable. Therefore, it is also possible to define formats for outputs, see section formatting with international. The list format, for example, allows you to add language-specific textual formatting for lists. If you do not specify locale information, the document language is used as a default. Date offers a date picker. The normal return value is a string in the format YYMMDD, year month day but it is also possible to customize this output according to language-specific formats. Well, this does not look as good as we would expect it in a nicely written text, so let's change it by using the internationalization API to a nicely formatted French date. Date time local includes both the date and time. The standard return format is YYMMDDTHH, MM, year month day T hour, minutes. The execution is triggered on every change. And, of course, it is also possible to format time and date in various ways. Last but not least, a time picker, which could also be formatted in various ways, not only as a timestamp, but also as a difference in seconds, minutes, or hours. I leave this to the interested reader to try to find a solution. It defines a field for an email address. The input value is checked, and an info message is presented to ensure a properly formatted email address. This input is similar to a search input, as the script execution is triggered only after pressing enter or when the input loses focus. An input field for telephone numbers. The script is also only executed after the input, not on every change. This type is special, as it does not produce any visible output. However, as shown in section connecting scripts with output, it can be used to hide complex intermediate calculations that might be used by various different elements as input. defines a color picker. The normal return value has the format hashtag RRGGBB, red, green, blue. The numeric values are defined in hexadecimal ranging from 00 to FF. This is not an input type, but instead the application of the text area HTML element. 
This can be used to edit more complex multi-line strings. The script is only executed after the element has lost focus. You can use the output equals channel name parameter to define a dedicated channel on which the script publishes its changed outputs. Other scripts can subscribe to these changes via input channel name, but the channel name has to be enclosed in markdown style backticks, as depicted below. When a script is executed, at input gets replaced by the current value of the script while input markers with topics are replaced by the actual displayed output from other scripts. Every change in the result of one script causes an update of the script that uses the foreign output. Note that formatting is only performed on the displayed representation and does not affect the actual input and output values. If you connect scripts, ideally the connections should form a directed graph without cycles. However, if desired, you can create cycles that continue until the results no longer change. The default parameter is used to define the default output of this script. Without it, the initial calculation would result in an error due to the circular dependency, as the scripts require the outputs of each other, which cannot be calculated initially. To prevent errors, try to define a default output value for your scripts. The following example does not really make sense, it is only used to illustrate some aspects of this approach. There is a recurring and parameterized calculation within the table. Instead of using multiple scripts, we only had to define one macro that performs some calculation and formatting. The two other scripts are simple input parameters that have a certain effect on these cells. Combining scripts with macros reduces a lot of boilerplate and allows for handling complexity more efficiently. Additionally, these scripts work seamlessly with all other LIA script elements previously presented, such that updates even affect the diagram representation of the table. Sorting of columns also works seamlessly. Set the default input value, if it is a number or a string or something else, depends on the usage of the add input macro within the script. As mentioned earlier, every input field has a specific update handling, range, number, text, radio, checkbox, trigger the execution of the script on every change, while the others are triggered only after the user hits enter or if the input field loses the focus. However, 
By using the parameter update on change you can change this behavior. It can be switched off or on by passing true or false. If you only pass update on change true is used as the default. Inputs are only visible if the user clicks on the script representation. If you pass the parameter input active, then the input will be visible on the first appearance, but it will be closed if the element loses the focus again. Using this parameter, it is possible to switch on the input field forever, it will not be closed if the focus is lost. A script will be executed multiple times, if the site is rendered, or if it is associated to a certain effect number. If the calculation should be executed only once use this parameter, the result is preserved and displayed on every appearance. By double-clicking onto a script, you get into edit mode. The code is displayed to the user and can be edited and it is executed again if the code input field loses the context. By setting modify equals, false, to false, this editing function is switched to furthermore there is no gray background displayed. By using the format parameter you can set a specific kind of visual formatting. This will be visible to the user. But if you connect different script with input, output then the original result of an execution will be passed to the subsequent scripts. The links below show contain all information to the associated formatting all params are directly passed to the formatting function. Use locale to change the type of language, localization. If you do not pass such a value, then the default document language setting is used as default. Since Lia script allows for opening classrooms with a chat that supports Lia script syntax and synchronizes the states of quizzes and surveys between users, along with support for collaborative editing, we have decided to add a new experimental API. This API allows anyone to create new collaborative Lia script extensions by combining scripts with anything that might be interesting, such as collaborative painting, marking positions on a map, and more. The following code creates an entire waving app, where students can send little raining icons to vote, for example, for a topic. This functionality can be easily put into a template that can be imported into different courses. Try it out by opening a classroom on multiple browsers. Here is the base code that you can try out and modify. Afterwards, share your course via the